Hello and welcome back to Croatia. We are now in Stari Grad, which is on the island of Yavar. It is one of the oldest cities in Croatia. We were lucky enough to find a beautiful house on Airbnb that is 450 years old, which is crazy. And it has seen so much history, which we will get into as we walk around. It is just hard to comprehend. It's so special. Just all the lives that have been led here and what they must have seen or experienced. It's a world away from anything that I've known. So it's just really cool to think about and such an honor to be staying here and able to enjoy it. So I'll take you around to the different rooms and tell you what I know about the history, which I'm sure is super limited compared to what's actually all happened here. But we'll go take a little walk around. I'll show you the gardens and then in a little bit, I think we are going to be making some fresh pasta, which a lot of people asked for a fresh pasta recipe on my YouTube channel. So I thought we'd make a typical Croatian pasta, which would be super, super fun. Yeah, let's go take a little walk around. My room's a bit of a mess. I've just been editing, so I've been sitting on the beds. I have this very sweet view out of the window. Super nice, it's the street view, but my neighbors have a beautiful quince tree. Little mirrors. That's big. Beautiful art everywhere you look. Gotta turn the light on in here. We go. This is the hallway upstairs. So simple, super beautiful. This is the second bedroom. The rooms have these little double beds and they are so comfortable compared to the other beds in Croatia so far. They've all been rock hard, but these beds are super soft and comfy. Little art pieces. I especially like this little house and the little dog. So cute. Another beautiful mirror. Now, I wouldn't recommend this house for anyone elderly just because of these stairs are super steep. I don't know if you can tell. Super steep, no railing. I'm 5'2", and I nearly hit my head on these stairs. My dad would definitely not be able to make it up. We have our front door. That's bright blue take you outside in a moment. Downstairs we have the most important room of the house, which is the kitchen. <laughs> Here's a sneak peek of what we'll be using in our dinner that we got from the market. Everything you can need. So beautifully placed. There's just this hole in the wall <laughs> where they keep all of their liquor. I think that's so cute. I love that. This floor is actually very special as well. It was the floor to a cellar and out back we'll see there's ruins of an olive oil mill and they would use that big wide door to open up and roll the barrels of olive oil through. Next to the kitchen is the bathroom and this wall here dates back to Roman times. This is the original wall. Original wall and flooring, which is super, super amazing. Just to think of the history I'm placing my feet on. It's super incredible to me. Got our bathroom. Obviously everything's messier than when we got here. We have been living here for a couple of days. <laughs> Nice shower, and this opens up to our backyard, 
which we keep open for showering. It's so nice to have the sunlight coming in. Stairs that lead to the upstairs in the bedrooms. And this gorgeous pergola. This is my favorite part. We can't quite figure out what kind of vines these are. I don't believe they're grape vines. Um, we think maybe wisteria is in there as well as maybe um, Oh, there's another one. My grandma will know. Pinky. <laughs> what kind of vines are these? <laughs> so pretty. Surrounded by this rock wall. Here we have our laundry hanging. <laughs> if you go up here. This structure is the ruins of the olive oil mill. is pretty darn cool. We have our magic garden back here. I should have put on shoes, but just hope the bugs leave me alone. <laughs> back here we found lots of exciting things. We have right here, you can see those orange flowers. That's a pomegranate tree. Unfortunately, pomegranates are not in season, but still super beautiful to look at and exciting to me. <laughs> You'll probably hear the neighbor's rooster. He's been quite upset today. We're just chatty. <laughs> Have some beautiful poppies. Watch my step. We have some wild fennel, which we actually already harvested some fennel down by the beach, which I will insert those clips. So I was just laying on the beach looking up at this hillside and I saw these really familiar wispy fronds blowing in the wind. So I thought I'd come check it out and it turns out it's wild fennel which I did know comes from the Mediterranean actually and is not native to the States, but we have wild fennel there as well. And so I recognized it, I could smell the licorice and the anise scent. And so I'm going to pick some because we're making pasta tomorrow. So I thought I'd make my fennel pasta sauce, which I'm really excited about. So let's do that. Just picked it up just for us. We don't need very much and we want to for others if they come across it and for it to reseed next year. They are perennials, so we'll leave those guys be. And I also got some flowers that are growing abundantly up here. I'm not sure what kind they are, but I also found some um, spring onions that were wild, but they already flowered, so that means they're very bitter. You're not really supposed to eat them at that point, so we're gonna leave those guys be. Rosemary here. Tons and tons. So beautiful. I wish I could dry it and take it home with me. And one more thing back here. Ooh, bugs on my feet. <laughs> we have, let's see if I can reach it. There's some green beans. <laughs> There's a few back there. I'm not sure if I'll be grabbing those, but pretty beautiful. Little butterflies, little picnic area, and another pomegranate tree. It's a little outdoor sink as well, which is very nice. I washed some fruit out here earlier. It's beautiful. Here's the top of the pergola. Can anyone identify what these are? So curious. Here's our ancient street. And our little blue door. The Church of St. John is just down the way, which I'll insert some clips of that. Hey 
you're so pretty. It's hot out, huh? The old stones keep it so nice and cool in here. It's a very hot day. It feels so nice to relax downstairs. You can see why it was used as a cellar. It's just the perfect temperature. It's so nice and cold. Alrighty, I think we should get started on dinner. Mushki. 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 Today we will be making pukansi, which is a pasta from Istria, Croatia, that is incredibly easy to make. The full recipe will also be linked below. We are going to start by making a simple pasta dough. Add your flour and salt to a large bowl or pile it on a clean surface. Using a fork or your fingers, make a well in the center. Crack your eggs into the center of the well and beat with a fork. Slowly incorporate the flour. tablespoons at a time and use your hands to start molding the dough. Press and roll the dough, folding it in on itself until it begins to come together. Remove from the bowl and knead on a clean surface for 10 to 12 minutes until you have a perfectly smooth and elastic dough. Wrap the dough in cling film and refrigerate for 30 minutes. In the meantime, we are going to make our sauce. Start by cleaning the artichokes. To get the most meat out of the artichokes, I peel off the outer leaves, then use a knife to clean the stem and base.
cut the purple tops off and place the artichokes in a bowl with cool water and lemon slices. This will prevent the artichokes from browning and keep them lovely for a lot longer. Mince two cloves of garlic. Next, we are going to heat three tablespoons of olive oil in a small saucepan. Add the artichokes stem side up in the oil. Cover with a lid and cook on low for 25 minutes. While the artichokes are cooking, chop your fennel and blanch in boiling water for 5 to 10 minutes or until softened. Remove from the water and set aside. Now we are going to roughly chop our tomatoes. Heat two tablespoons of olive oil in a pan and add your garlic. Cook for one minute before adding the fennel and tomatoes. Cook the sauce on medium-high heat, stirring occasionally, and use the back of a spoon to crush the tomatoes. Once the artichokes are gorgeous and tender, remove from the pan and roughly chop. Add to the sauce and stir gently. Make sure everything is evenly distributed and cook for another couple of minutes to incorporate the wonderful flavors of the artichoke. Now for the fun part. Our dough is fully rested, so we are going to remove that from the fridge and start making our pasta. This pasta does not require a machine and feels like your child playing with Play-Doh. It's so much fun to make. Sim Simply pinch off a small piece of dough, roll between your hands, and stretch out the edges a little bit, and there you go. This pasta will expand while cooking, so I suggest making them slightly smaller than we did. Bring a pot of lightly salted water to a boil and cook your pasta for seven to 10 minutes or until al dente. Toss in your finished sauce and serve with a glass of white wine. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Make sure to like and subscribe for new videos every week. 
if you would like to support my work, I will have my Patreon account linked below. Thank you for supporting my dream. Every little bit helps. I appreciate you all so much. I hope you all have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next Sunday.